So in this movie, we pick up right where we left off in starting to construct and learn how to work with the 3D scene in Anime Studio. We've gone ahead and created uh, several squares. We've rotated them with our layers rotation tools, and now we're going to start positioning them and seeing what we can do with this. By the way, if you have a scroll wheel mouse, you can go ahead and move your cursor over any of these open window panes and zoom into them. Sure helps a lot to do it that way. I'll do that now, and if you're a Mac with a, a one-button mouse, I would encourage you to get the Mac Mighty Mouse so you can get this functionality because it spans different kinds of programs in some very great ways. So here we are, layer three. We've got this purple square selected. I've got my layer translation tool selected, keyboard shortcut one. I'm going to go ahead and drag this thing up and hold the shift key at the same time to the top of that white square that we first drew. Now from the top view, I know I want it to move away further back into space, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that and shift click and drag it to, I can see that little line there that is the white square, and drag it so that the edge is just about touching there, not quite. I'll come down to square two and do the same thing. I'm going to drag that. As long as I'm in the top view, I'll keep that active. And now from the right view, I'll click and shift and drag down so that that lines up towards the bottom of the white square. And now we've got something interesting going on. Let's take a look here at exactly what we're seeing. We know that the white square is closer to the camera, closer to the viewer, than the purple or the yellow square. But it looks like we can see through the white square. What's going on here? Well, this is a function of Anime Studio and how it's a little bit different than other 3D programs if you've worked with other 3D programs. Whenever you work with 3D space in Anime, it's good to create a special parent group. So let's do that right now and I'll show you why. I'll come here to the New Layers tab. I'll click on that and come down to Group. And we get an empty folder in there. And I'll just go ahead and name this something highly, highly original like 3D Group and select OK. Now I just simply have to drag these layers into that group. And you saw the layer highlight bright red when I did that. Once a layer is in there, you can go ahead and grab other layers and simply drag them underneath that. A little red line shows up and they become subsets to that. Pretty easy to do. Well, looking at our regular view, our camera view, we still have this, this kind of strange problem going on. And it has to do with how our layers are stacked here. The layer that is on the top is always the one that's drawn first, and the ones underneath that always take a second seat. Just like we were working with shape orders, the layers are that more obviously identified. Whatever's on top is seen first, whatever's on the bottom is seen last. So our purple and our yellow squares, even though they're further back in space, because of the layer structure right now, they're being drawn first ahead of the white square. Now, Dragging these around and reorganizing them, no big deal. Easy to do. But if we had a whole bunch of trees because we were doing an outdoor scene or we had a car going down a street and there's a fence and then a house and further in the distance is trees and then there's clouds and mountains, this could get to be a problem. Fortunately, there's an easy way to go ahead and fix that with Anime Studio. The top group, the enclosing group, you can simply select it, double click on it. We get our layer setting coming up. And we have a tab here that we haven't paid attention to before, and that is depth sorting. What I'll ask Anime to do automatically for me is to sort the layers by depth, how far back in, in space they are. And then I want it to actually sort them by real actual distance from the camera, and that's the Z information that we've been seeing up here in the distance. I'll select that with those two enabled. I'll select OK. And automatically, it should go ahead and resort that. We now have a proper view here in our viewport. It hasn't changed anything in the side or top views at all, but the way it presents now on the screen is much more accurate. Let's go back to one view. And you'll say, but wait a minute, the layers didn't move around. Well, that's okay. We'll leave the layers just where we are, and that's the benefit of having anime sorted out, is it doesn't change your layer structure, but it does change how things are presented. So if you've built your scene with a certain layer structure in mind that makes sense to you, Anime doesn't shuffle that around, it simply shuffles how 
these objects sort on the screen. Well, let's take a look at our 3D space. This is when we come down and we are not going to mess with camera controls. We're going to come down to the actual workspace controls right now and we've got a great one to see 3D scenes called Orbit, keyboard shortcut 9. When you select that and then click in your scene, you're taken to a third person camera that allows you to see how your scene is set up. So we get to see our camera if you need to zoom in a little bit to see detail a little bit more you can and that makes it really easy to see that what you were doing actually was making good sense. If we grab one of our layer tools right here and for example grab the yellow square we can go ahead and move this in 3D space still. So we can tune up a scene using the orbit camera and kind of get around our whole scene just that much more easily. So that is working with 3D Space and Anime Studio. Very easy. Once you get into it, it's insanely fun to do. And that ends our last movie for working with the drawing tools. In our next section, we're going to learn how to go ahead and create some basic bone structures and use the other function we haven't used in the tools palette, and that is linking stuff together.